honored to be here and greatly honored. Uh, especially because I do not come only as Dev Mohan, I come as a representative of the, of the global foundation called Mohanji Foundation, um, which is basically uh, all about a man who is, uh, for me, not just a man or my husband, he uh, represents the very essence of the Guru principle. And it was through my own uh, spiritual experiences that I have understood how the nature works and what this really means. So I hope I will be able to convey this to you uh, in a few words. Uh, so uh, Monji is also for me a platform. Monji Foundation is a platform that brings joy, fulfillment, inner peace and transformative techniques to many, many people around the world. And um, I believe that only that what is experienced and that passes through the filter of our inner experience is only real for us. Right? We all honor various scriptures, teachings, but do we really live them? That is the question. So for today I have challenged myself uh, not to have any written speech <laughs> and not to speak anything that is not my own experience. Because uh, I believe when we preach something we should also live it. Right? So even if it's one small tenant or one of the religions, we should live it so that we have the right to preach it. So we have to start with our inner journey. And it's beautifully explained in Islam, the jihad is the inner uh, journey. Jihad is the inner fight with our enemy within. Right? So that's uh, one of the things when I understood that, I shifted from my uh, postgraduate studies and peace studies, I shifted to the science of yoga. So it was a profound moment I was in 2004 at the University of Notre Dame. I was brought there through immense grace, immense grace through scholarships, through possibility to really educate myself and uh, uplift myself, to align myself with my purpose. And yet, towards the end of the studies, I come across this book, Autobiography of a Yogi. I don't know if you heard about the book. It's a very powerful book, which for me is a uh, guru tattva in itself. The essence of the guru principle works through this book. It's not just a book. And uh, it touched me deeply, you know, it totally opened my eyes. It opened my eyes to a whole new dimension of my being. And after reading this book, all I uh, was really, really passionate about was to somehow get across the world to India, get a, get a hold of those masters and yogis, and start working on through this yoga, kriya, various methods to actually start changing my energy blueprint so that I can shine the way they shine, so that that divinity can manifest through me as well. Uh, if we want to bring peace, we need to first make ourselves so strong from within that when we encounter these people, when we encounter these situations of global craziness around us, like when suddenly the, the energy of war starts, the story, the nationalism, this and that, we remain strong and centered in the heart. And this has a lot to do with awareness. Uh, a lot of this interfaith dialogues that speak about dialoguing. This is mind, mind dialogues. I would like to talk about the awareness, which is beyond the mind. Yeah. Um, awareness is beyond the mind. And awareness is a vertical direction. And this is what I understood once I had one of my spiritual experiences which kind of started happening to me after a near-death experience. I had a near-death experience in the year 2000 while I was working in Kosovo for United Nations. And um, even though it was a scary kind of looking experience, actually, actually it was a big blessing and it has opened me to a whole new world of um, awareness and love for divine. So I choose not to fear divine. I do not have any fear related to divine energies. That is why I have turned to yoga, because I see God as love, and I see no fear in God. So when we turn ourselves in the, into the vibration of love, first what happens is the opening of the heart. So I feel divine has constructed us indefinitely in the image of divine, because when we start opening in awareness, we start developing a light body. And this light body is the Christ consciousness, is the divine consciousness in us. I met a saint who told me that he spent all his life meditating, he reached the bliss states 
But towards the end of his life, he realized he made a big mistake. He did not serve. He did not serve, and his light body could not happen. So we are made in the image of divine because we are meant to establish ourselves in that love, and we are meant to share that love. We are meant to bring that vibration into here, into this body, into this experience. And that's why it's so powerful. And that's why charity starts from that action, expressing love in action, and then it manifests into the words, manifests into the thoughts. And the purity of intention breaks all the barriers. So that the, the thread, the golden thread that connects us is that love. It's just the, uh, how much can we live it? How much can we apply it? How much can we not be afraid in the moments where our life is threatened, where, where we, are, we can lose everything? Another experience happened one day. I just suddenly saw myself. I can't really put it into words, but it's like a tree. The tree, which is made of energy, drawing from up and all the way down, and it's alive. And it's like a vertical creation of energy running through my central axis, through my being. And I can see buildings falling apart, people screaming and running around, complete chaos, fear, destitution. And I'm within this vertical column and I exist in that energy, and I'm untouched, right? So I somewhere understood that this is actually our aim. If we want to bring peace, if we want to ground the peace, it has to happen through our spine. Spine is the stairway to heaven. And that's where I turn to the India and the ancient teachings because they have known it all along. <laughs> that vertical dimension of our being is the answer for peace. This is a lady who has a leprosy, uh, victim of leprosy. Um, and this is what I appreciate about India the most. When you come to India and you see the poor people, and then you see this kind of a smile on the face of a person whose fingers are falling off, her eyes are popping out, who has no money and no help and no medical aid or nothing. But when she saw me, some white girl came from Europe somewhere in the other part of the world, she smiled like this. And in her smile, I saw God. says for the hungry food is God <laughs> and it really is that way there's no point preaching anything if somebody's hungry so if we uh, want to serve peace there's not one formula that works for each location uh, but the thing is that uh, be aware be centered center yourself in the heart see what is the situation around you and see what you can do so what we can do uh, is that we can selflessly, without expecting anything in return, share our talents, share our resources, share uh, our love with those who are in need. Right? So that is the, the, the point. Um, when the war in former Yugoslavia sta started, if we had uh, groups of people who were nurturing selflessness, awareness, uh, spirituality beyond religiosity, I don't believe it, it could have happened. It wouldn't hold ground. Uh, but we, we, we were in a country that used to be communist, then it, suddenly this nationalism became popular and all the ethnic groups belonged to their churches and each church was fighting against the other and the priests were blessing the killings and this whole thing was going on. We didn't have the bridge. We didn't have the bridge. And uh, I must say that uh, two years ago we went to a place in Sarajevo in Bosnia, where uh, some of the biggest atro atrocities were happening. And you wouldn't believe there is a pyramid there. You can check it on Discovery Channel. And uh, anybody who has any basic sensitivity to energy will realize that there is great energy there. But just imagine out of that mud, of all that pain and gore, there is this <laughs> pyramid that has emerged in there. It was there all along, but now it's becoming more and more active. So sometimes I guess it's necessary to destroy something to start a new, the phoenix bird to come out. So uh, we were there at this Bosnian pyramid and there's this spiritual master, Mohaji from India, and there were people from all parts of former Yugoslavia, from different ethnic groups who came to listen to him talk, who came to do meditation. You know, and I had tears in my eyes. You know, honestly, I've not seen this before. And Mohaji smiled and he said, it took an Indian man to bring all of you here together. <laughs> because in Bosnia, they have uh, Serbs, Croats, Muslims, the, uh, Bosnia Muslims, they have three different versions of history. They're learning in the same school, different histories. They all have their interpretations. Each one is pointing the finger at the other. 
So whenever you blame another, you lose your power. You're not assuming responsibility, right? This is the point. So that's why we said that it's the love and responsibility. We need these two ingredients to make our peace happen. And for anything with longevity, the main ingredient is love. If you look at anything in history where there was no love, it was not passing the test of time. In India, they call Maya is the illusion. Maya means that what is measurable. And love is unmeasurable. It cannot be measured. It can only be experienced and radiated and shared. So I feel as individuals, uh, some people are not uh, really drawn to really work towards their spiritual awakening, but they can make initial steps. Initial steps would be social service, assuming responsibility and sharing what you have. So instead of focusing on the resources, we focus on the source. When we focus on the source, the resource will come. Thank you. <laughs>